Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about pneumonia. Now what is pneumonia? Pneumonia is the acute inflammation of the lung parenchyma and this lung parenchyma is distal to the terminal bronchiole. So after the terminal bronchiole, you have respiratory bronchiole, the alveolar ducts and the alveolar sac. So the acute inflammation of this area distal to the terminal bronchiole is known as pneumonia. Now going to the pathogenesis, we will discuss about pathogenesis, then the morphology in various pneumonias. Now going to the pathogenesis, the microorganisms in, uh, can enter into the lungs by four routes. So you, uh, they can enter by inhalation, they can in enter by aspiration of the organism from the nasopharynx or the oropharynx, then hematological spread and lastly the direct spread from any adjoining site of infection. There are certain conditions in which some reflexes of the body they are altered. So they make us more prone to develop pneumonia. So what are those? So first is the loss or suppression of the cuff reflex. So in the cases uh, where the person is in coma or under the effect of anesthesia, any neuromuscular disorders or drugs. So there is a uh, suppression of cuff reflex and this can uh, make the person more prone to developing pneumonia. Second is injury to the mucociliary apparatus and this can be by cigarette smoke, by any gases, by viral diseases or by genetic defects in the ciliary function that is like immotile cilia syndrome. So here also the person is more prone to develop pneumonia. Other things such as accumulation of secretions is the seen in some conditions such as cystic fibrosis, uh, pulmonary congestion and edema is there. So this can also make the person more prone to developing pneumonia. Now going to the classification, there are many classifications. So first classification is on the basis of anatomical region of the lung parenchyma which is involved. So according to which region of the lung is involved, the pneumonia is classified into lobar pneumonia then bronco or lobular pneumonia lobular pneumonia and interstitial pneumonia so as the name suggests in case of bronco uh, in the case of lobar pneumonia one lobe of the lung will be involved this is the lobar pneumonia however in case of your bronco pneumonia what happens is it is a patchy involvement it is multifocal patchy involvement that is the bronco or the lobular pneumonia. Other uh, classification based on the clinical setting in which the pneumonia has been developed is community acquired, then healthcare associated, especially the hospital acquired pneumonia, ventilator associated pneumonia, then basis on the etiology, it can be bacterial, viral or fungal. So these are the classifications of the pneumonia. Going to firstly the lobar pneumonia and the morphology in it. So as we discussed in the lobar pneumonia, you can see one lobe is affected. Okay, so it can be a part of lobe also, it can be entire lobe also and also two lobes of one or both the lungs. But mostly lobe is involved in case of lobar pneumonia. In case of bronchopneumonia, it is a patchy involvement. Now going to the morphological features in the case of lobar pneumonia. So if there is no treatment and the patient goes towards the stage of resolution, that means the patient is improving itself. So there are uh, four phases which are followed in case of lobar pneumonia. First is the stage of congestion. This is known as the initial phase. Then the red hepatization, gray hepatization and the resolution. Now going to the first stage, that is the stage of congestion. So as the name suggests, this is a stage of congestion. So conge uh, this is a very early phase. It lasts for around only one to two days. The affected lobe, because it is congested, okay, so it will be enlarged, it will be dark red in color. And if you press it, if you press the cut surface, it will exude a blood-stained frothy fluid. Now going to the histology. As it is the stage of congestion, you will see mainly the congestion of capillaries, okay. Then edema will be present. However, the neutrophils and the RBCs are less in this stage. They are less of RBCs and neutrophils. You will see in further stage, they will increase. So if you see this picture, this is the picture of acute congestion stage. There is edema present. There is dilated alveoli present. 
okay there are congested blood vessels also present however the rbcs and uh, neutrophils they are less in number then the second stage is the red hepatization stage here what you remember is the neutrophils they increase so what is red hepatization red hepatization is also known as early consolidation phase the name hepatic okay the word is used as hepatic hepatization so this shows that the consistency of the lung here is liver like so the term hepatization refers to liver like consistency the affected lobe is red in color it is red firm and consolidated it is airless and has a liver like consistency if you see histologically here now here in the first stage there was edema here the edema is replaced by fibrin okay it is replaced by fibrin and secondly there is increase in neutrophils and the rbcs so this is the difference from the first stage going to the third stage that is gray hepatization here again it is heavy it is uh, has a liver like consistency but it is gray in color so the cut surface is dry granular gray in appearance has a liver like consistency the color change from red to gray occurs from the hilum to the periphery okay so this is how the color change will be appreciated going to the histology now what will happen again fibrin it increases okay and if you see the microscopy there is increased fibrin the neutrophils are lower the macrophages are also appearing and there is a clear space so if you see this is the alveolar wall and this are the neutrophils so between there here the clear space which is seen so appearance of this space is also seen in gray hepatization phase last phase is the resolution phase now here the lobe which was earlier liver like was airless now it restores its normal aeration how because the fibrin which was formed is now digested by some enzymes so there is fibrin is being dissolved so this restores the normal aeration of the lobe this process begins centrally and spreads to the periphery but cut surface if you will see there will be again some fluid which will be exuded during the during pressing histologically you will see fragments of fibrin now fibrin will be fragmented because it is lysis by enzyme so fragment of the fibrin you can see granular fragmented strands of the fibrin then macrophages will be present neutrophils will be very low and capillaries will also again be slightly engorged now going to uh, this was the phases which are seen in lobar pneumonia going to the bronco pneumonia so in this there are foci of involvement so we discussed there are certain foci of involvement in case of bronco pneumonia so this mostly occurs on the basal side the bronco pneumonia mostly involve the basal side of the lung because the secretions they tend to gravitate towards the lower lobes and if you see histologically mostly there will be neutrophil rich exudate bronco pneumonia involves person of extremes of age however lobar pneumonia affects person of a uh, normal age group also so if you see bron uh, bronco pneumonia you will have patchy consolidation of the lung so there will be patchy consolidation of the lung and here entire lobe is involved and similarly if you will see on x ray there will be uh, multiple uh, radio opaque uh, densities here you will have a entire radio opaque area so uh, clinical course person can present with different features such as high fever they can be chills cough having mucoporin uh, sputum uh, the pain can be higher also if there is pleuritis is present so there will be pleuritic pain and pleural rub friction rub can also be there so this is the just uh, overview of the uh, clinical presentation lastly the complication uh, in the uh, we were discussing that the patient gets resolute uh, there is resolving of the inflammation however other complication can also be there there can be organization organization that means after the fibrin there can be ingrowth of the fibroblast and then this tissue, the area can get fibrosed totally 
then pleural effusion can take place along with pneumonia empyema can take place lung abscess can take place and also other areas nearby to the lung can also get affected like pericarditis can be there endocarditis can be there myocarditis can be there so this was all about the pneumonia do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these videos thank you for watching this video thank you